The Sonoff is a cost-effective smart home solution designed and produced by ITED. It is based off an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip and can connect to appliances of different types and brands. The cost is significantly less than other smart outlets. It also boasts a physical push-button switch with real-time syncing. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech. Today we're going to be talking about these little guys and how to get them integrated with your SmartThings smart home. Let's get started. First thing you'll need is one of these. It's an FTDI adapter. Link in the description so you can pick one up. This is what's used to actually flash the firmware onto the Sonoff itself. The next thing you'll need is the ESP Easy firmware. There'll be a link in the description so you can download this as well. Now the next few things you don't actually need but I highly recommend it. This is a what's called a, a header for jumper pins and these are the jumper pins themselves. You'll see why these are important to have later on. Also a soldering iron sure wouldn't hurt as well as some solder. I have a link to a pretty nice soldering kit in the description for pretty cheap. Also a pretty nice thing to have is one of these. They're called a helping hand. They can, they can hold the different components while you're trying to solder or place the wires in the pins. Once again, link in the description for everything. Alright, the first thing you'll need to do after you got everything set up is download the ESP Easy firmware. Uh, it'll be the first link in the description underneath the Amazon links. Uh, it'll be the ESP Easy firmware. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this into a web browser. And click on the download down here. It'll open up the file to be extract the folder to be extracted. I'm going to go ahead and extract all and put it in my downloads folder. Alright, now that it's extracted, you can see the folder here. I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller and get rid of the pre-extracted one. And then we'll need to download the firmware image that Eric M created. Shout out to him. A uh, link to his website and SmartThings community posts will be down below in the description. There's also a written tutorial that he did on there. So you can check that out and post any questions you have. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it up here. And here we go. I'm going to drag that over to my ESP Easy folder. Now this bin file has to be in the same directory as the esptool.exe. So go ahead and drag it into here and then uh, you can get this out of the way and move on to the next step. These are the pins where you'll be attaching from the FTDI adapter through the jumper cables. This is also where you'll be attaching the header if you, ch if you choose to solder it on there. Here's an example of my shoddy solder job of the header on the bottom side and here's the header on the top of it. Now you want to make sure the FTDI adapter is set to 3.3 volts. That's done so with the jumper there, so make sure it's on the 3.3 section, not the 5 volt section. This is the pin layout, VCC, TX, RX, and then ground in that order. You'll attach respectively to the FTDI adapter. Alright guys, with your FTDI plugged into your PC, you're going to plug in your uh, VCC, mine happens to be brown for some weird reason, into the square pin, followed by uh, TX, then RX, and then ground. Since I put this header on there, it's, it's a lot easier. I don't have to try to hold these onto the different pins. Alright, now that they're all in, what you're going to need to do is put it into programming mode. To do that, Take your VCC back out real quick, hold down the uh, black button next to it, and then plug your VCC back in, Unlike, then you can let go of the button. Now it's in the programming mode. Let's go back to the PC. Alright, next what you'll need to do is go into the de device manager, right click on the Windows icon, go into device manager, and you'll need to find the COM number. Uh, this is your FTDI adapter right here, and click on the down arrow, you'll see COM number here. Mine happens to be COM5, yours may be different, not a big deal. 
Next, what you'll need to do is I recommend using a notepad or something like this. Uh, this is in the description right here. This is what we'll be putting in the command prompt. So paste this into a notepad and then replace percent com port percent with your uh, number. So minus five, I took that out and put five here, as you can see. Next thing we'll need to do is right click on the Windows icon again, open a command prompt as admin. Put this off to the side for now. Uh, as you can see here, I have the folder open which has my ESP Easy and my bin file that we did earlier. It's within this PC downloads ESP Easy. Yours may be in a different location. But uh, first thing we need to do within the command prompt is navigate to that folder. So what I did was write it down and type it up in a notepad of where it's located. I said downloads ESP Easy underscore R120. So I will copy that. Copy. There we go. Paste it in there. Hit enter. Now it's looking at that folder. Next thing we'll need to do is copy this that we did just a minute ago and paste it in there. Now as long as your Sonoff is in programming mode, you should be good to go and hit enter and it should flash it right up. takes a few minutes but uh, as you can see it says writing flash there at the bottom and those, those dots are a good sign. Alright, flush complete. Uh, everything looks good. We can close this out. I'll get rid of these and uh, go back to the sonar. Alright, we can go ahead and disconnect all of these if you want and from there you could Go ahead and put the input to your uh, 110 volt main to get power to the Sonoff. What I usually do is just disconnect the TX and RX ones, leave the VCC on the ground in. All this thing needs is 3.3 volts to work, and that's what we're getting with through our FTDI adapter. So now our Sonoff should be projecting a Wi-Fi signal. Let's go back to the PC to see if we can find it. All right, uh, let's go into our Wi-Fi, and there it is. It'll say Sonoff dot the MAC address of the Sonoff. So this number number will be different than yours. Go ahead and click on it, and the network key will be config me. So C O N F I G M E. and it'll bring up this. Go ahead and click configure Wi-Fi. You can configure without a scan. Click on mine. Enter my password. Save. All right guys, now that you have your Sonoff connected to your Wi-Fi network, next thing you'll need to do is go to your the SmartThings IDE website. Of course, there's a link for that down below as well. You'll need to sign in and go to My Device Handlers. Real quick, as you can see down here, I have Sonoff Wi-Fi switch. This is what yours will look like after you're done with this step. We'll do Create New Device Handler. Click From Code and the code you, you'll be getting from is also in link in the description under device handler that'll take you here what you want to do is click on the raw button copy this whole thing and paste it into this box you'll hit create up at the top you'll hit save and then publish for me and it'll say device type published successfully next thing I want to do is go to my smart apps and then you'll
you'll go to new smart app from code same idea there'll be another link in the description for this under smart app I want to go to raw again copy all of it and paste into here create again save and publish for me make sure it says publish successfully and now we can go to our smart things app on our device okay now we can go to our device I'm gonna go to marketplace go down to my apps you want to find the Sonoff in here the reason I have three of them is because I installed it three different times so you should probably only see one so click on it and then click done and then go make sure you're in smart apps here and then click on the Sonoff and then discover devices as it says at the top it can take up to five minutes so uh, just sit back and relax all right as you can see we found one switch I'm going to click on it hit the check mark click done and then next it says successfully added next in here you can go click on it and change the device name I'll change it to tutorial and then click change device name right underneath it says it's been renamed click next and then done <clears throat> now it should be in your list of things there's tutorial and at the bottom it says configured that's a good sign now you should be able to turn it on and off just like any other device after that uh, all you got to do is wire it up input into the input side output into the output side they're labeled n for neutral l for load uh, if you don't feel comfortable wiring this up get an electrician or somebody else that knows what they're doing I'm not going to be responsible for anything that happens to you or your property now you can wire these into appliances directly such as a crock pot or something like that I actually have some of these wired up to floor fans which is pretty helpful when connected to smart things you can really connect them to anything you could think of uh, just as long as it's not over 10 amp draw I think they have a 15 amp version maybe a 20 amp version I'm not entirely sure yeah enjoy using it I've had some fun with them for sure well that's it for this one guys make sure you subscribe ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future content I will see you guys in the next one